Hello, everyone. It is Phil Lee uh, returning with another episode of Civil War Chat. Today is Friday, the 7th of April, 2022. Our topic today is a Mickey Mouse complaint. But before we get started on that, let me just point out to you, we, we ask you to join us in our fight to defeat cultural genocide, the cultural genocide from the political left that is trying to sweep across the South. We don't ask for your donations, but we suggest that you buy our books to learn facts that you can rarely learn elsewhere. Join us in that fight. Buy our books, read them, and give them five-star ratings if you like them. One I'd like to bring to your attention, attention today is Lee's Lost Dispatch and other uh, Civil War controversies. In this book, you'll learn about uh, what the biggest mistake the Confederacy made during the war and the biggest mistake that the Union made during the war. Those are two separate chapters in this book. And of course, one of the chapters deals with Lee's lost uh, Special Order 191 at the Battle of Sharpsburg. Uh, I think this is $20 on Amazon. If you'd like an autographed copy, you can get it directly from me by emailing me, phil, P-H-I-L underscore Lee, L-E-I-G-H at me, M-E dot com. Okay. So today's topic uh, is a Mickey Mouse complaint. Copyright pr protection for Mickey Mouse's original depiction in the 1928 film Steamboat Willie will expire at the end of next year. If it expires, the D Disney company could face a wave of new competition like it has never seen before. People will be able to reproduce the image of that Mickey Mouse character. That is why Disney has repeatedly lobbied Congress to extend the protection term each time it was set to expire in the past, that is the copyright protection term. But they did so deceptively. Instead of arguing that they merely wanted to protect Mickey, for an additional number of years, they argued for a new copyright act affecting everyone that would give longer protection for all artistic creators. In other words, they said it as they were not really thinking of us, we're thinking of all the artists out there that need these longer protection times. So that's what I call about being deceptive, what I mean about it. Now, to be sure, they were usually able to enlist the support of deep pockets like Oscar Hammerstein and George Gershwin, the estates for those two uh, artists. This time, however, Disney may be facing stronger headwinds. I think it is. At least three congressional Republicans have announced that they will likely oppose any bill that has the effect of extending Mickey's copyright. They are motivated by revelations last week of internal video meetings at Disney showing top executives discussing agendas to promote homosexuality and transgenderism through their programming to small children. Not only will future animations and child programming feature more so-called queer characters, but amusement park employees have been taught to greet young guests with, hello, everyone, instead of hello, boys and girls. The Congress members also oppose Disney's opposition to a recent act in Florida that forbids teachers to discuss sexual orientation with children below the fourth grade and simultaneously keeping the contents of those discussions secret from the child's parents. If Disney had not thrown its weight around in Washington, Mickey's copyright would have expired in 1984, almost 40 years ago. When Steamboat Willie was released and America's copyright law provided for 28 years of protection, it could be extended for a second 28 years upon renewal. Consequently, in 1976, Congress overhauled the Copyright Act, as Mickey's uh, 
protection term was about to expire. So they overhauled the Copyright Act, providing Mickey 75 years of protection until 2003. As the 2003 deadline approached, Congress adopted yet another new amendment to the Copyright Act in 1998 that gives Mickey protection until the end of next year, and that's where we stand now. Now, supporters of that 1998 bill named it the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act to capitalize on public sympathies for a musical artist and congressman who died unexpectedly earlier that year. Sonny Bono is the white, uh, husband of Cher Bono, who is, I think, achieved more notoriety, but she's still living. Nonetheless, uh, in 1998, uh, that extension effectively extended Mickey's protection from the original 56 years to 95 years. Now, if, with Disney's woke agenda is not sufficient reason to stop the extension of the Copyright Act's protection term again, consider the effect it is having on the availability of older books. The works of many historians from 1927 to 1970 are out of print and unavailable in the public domain. One example is Philip S. Foner's Business and Slavery, The New York Merchants and Irrepressible Conflict. It looks at the business reason why the Union wanted to go to, into the Civil War. And uh, it wasn't just another rehash of, well, the, the war was all about slavery and the Southerners are, are the ones that are at fault there. That book looks at the business reasons why Northerners wanted to go to war, wanted to have uh, Fort Sumter attack. Under terms of the Copyright Act, applicable at the time the book was published in 1941, it would have entered the public domain in 1997, what, 25 years ago. At that point, Google could have added it to Google's vast library of public domain books, which you can access online for free. As it is, however, the book will not be out of copyright in two, until 2036, which seems like an eternity when you look forward. Since the publisher feels that the current demand is too small to justify another print run, the available supply is dwindling. If you want to get that book, the cheapest price on Amazon for a used copy is $160. Finally, given the irresponsible inflationary policies of the federal government, America's economy could be heading for a type of, the type of disaster that followed the roaring 1920s 100 years ago. Yet Disney's sporadic rejiggling of America's copyright law have left us in a situation where many economic books written during the, the roaring 20s and warning of some kind of a stock market or economic disaster to come, they are generally unavailable to the public now because they are not in the public domain where Google would make them available for free. And published copies are so rare that, that the publishers won't, won't, won't do another print run either because the publisher's out of business or because he doesn't, he decides there's not enough demand for another print run. And as a consequence, it could put America in a situation where we repeat history because we are ignorant of it. Oh yeah, we know the stock market crash came in 1929. We know there was a Great Depression, but availability of books written during the Roaring Twenties, warning of that, and overlaying that to the present period of the 2020s, might give us more conviction of, of uh, the mistakes that we are making now. I mean, it should be obvious. Uh, ideas like you know, forgive student debt. Student debt already exceeds all the automobile debt. And forgiving student debt would just have a disastrous effect on inflation, plus the, the morale of the country where, where you basically give people that have uh, been irresponsible a free ride and put the burden for their debts on everyone else. But be that as it may, again, let me uh, just uh, ask you, to, 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 to stop this cultural genocide, uh, it will be helpful to all of us to learn facts that can enable us to combat those that demean our ancestors and disparage them and criticize them. There's another story to tell. I mean, it's like a pancake. No matter how thin it is, there are two sides to it. So 
you're not going to get the other side from the academics or even the mainstream publishers at this point. But um, you know, I've got a, about nine books on the Civil War that you can read. And uh, this is one of Lee's Lost Dispatch and other Civil War controversies. Like I say, uh, buy them at Amazon on, or get an autographed copy from me. But if you read it and you like it, please give it a five-star rating on Amazon. That really helps us out. Thanks a lot. See you next time.